Well, hello. Wow. <laughs> you don't look like Sarah. Well, that's because I'm Katie, one of Penobscot Marine Museum summer interns. Who are you? I'm Mr. Ropes. Ropes for short. Well, it's nice to meet you, Mr. Ropes. Where did you come from? I live at the Penobscot Marine Museum in Searsport now, but I spent a lot of time at sea. You sailed on one of those big merchant vessels? Yep. Searsport captains and often their families traveled all over the world sailing goods from port to port. Meow. They brought cats along as part of the crew. We were also good company. Well, do you have any good stories from your travels? I happen to have put together a puppet show about one of my trips. Would you like to see it? Absolutely. One voyage I remember particularly well. Captain William Myers brought me on the Mabel I. Myers. Captain Myers was from Searsport. His son, Ralph, was the second mate. Harry Perry was the first mate, and he was from Searsport, too. There were seven seamen, plus the cook, mates, and captain. We didn't always bring passengers, but on this trip, we brought along Ernest Perkins and Dr. S. We were traveling from Boston, Massachusetts to Buenos Aires, Argentina in South America. We left the wharf on Monday, October 17, 1892. The wind wasn't quite right, so it took us a few days to get out to the open ocean. I discovered three English sparrows who seemed to have also made the Mabel I. Myers their home. English sparrows are small land birds found almost everywhere there are people. The passengers probably gave them breadcrumbs to eat because they enjoyed the birds chirping. On Sunday morning, the sparrows and caught them one by one. They made an excellent breakfast. On Wednesday, there was a commotion on the deck, so I went to see what everyone was looking at. A shark was following the Mabel I. Myers. We could see his white fins. He was about 10 or 12 feet long and a very light green color. He also had some friends swimming with him. They are littler fish and are called pilot fish. They eat tiny organisms living on the shark and also leftovers from shark meals. Sunday, October 30th was our second Sunday at sea. I was quite enjoying my voyage. I had the important job of looking for mice and other small animals on board. Plus the passenger, Ernest Perkins, along with the cook, would slip me nice tidbits of food every once in a while. Meow. We were excited on Wednesday, November 2nd, when we received a very distinguished guest alongside the Mabel. He was a whale about 45 or 50 feet long. He came within 100 yards of us and blowed, then went down. On Monday, November 7th, we saw a bunch of flying fish. There must have been a million. Sometimes it seemed as if the surface of the water was alive with these small winged bodies darting here and there. Flying fish don't fly like a bird does, but they can leap out of the water and their wing-like fins let them glide for long distances. The flying fish stayed with us into Tuesday. By then we were within 200 miles from the mainland of Africa. It's interesting that the easiest way to sail to South America is to take the winds almost all the way to Africa first. We had a little excitement on Wednesday with a school of dolphins playing around our bow. There were 10 or 12 of them varying in size from three feet to eight and nine feet. Their antics and playing was something wonderful to watch. Dolphins prefer warm weather, but with my gray fur, I was getting rather warm when we were near the equator. On Friday, November 12th, a swallow rested on board two or three times. I kept an eye out for him because he looked like he would make a nice snack. We finally crossed the equator on Wednesday, November 16th, on a day when many flying fish were surrounding the stern or back of the Mabel I. Myers. 
On Monday, November 21st, I remember a particularly funny incident. I was enjoying pets from Ernest and Harry Perry on the deck. Dr. S. had gone to bed. Suddenly, a large bird landed on the rail right in front of us. Harry grabbed him and got hold of its legs and held on. It was about two feet from tip to tip and a clear white color. It had a yellow head and a black bill and legs. The bill was three or four inches long and very sharp. Dr. S. left his window open at night, so Ernest and Harry decided they would drop the bird into Dr. S.'s room. Once it was let loose, the bird flew around the room and made all sorts of noise. Dr. S. woke up and chased it with an umbrella. It was quite amusing. A little over a week later, on Wednesday, November 30th, we saw a big sea turtle about 100 yards away. Sea turtles breathe air, so they have to come to the surface to breathe. They can hold their breath for a long time and spend most of their time underwater. Another week went by, and on Tuesday, December 6th, we saw an albatross. Sometimes they are called a Cape Hen because they seldom go far from Cape Horn. They are a very large bird measuring some 10 or 11 feet from tip to tip of wing. They come within a few hundred feet of the ship and circle round and round as if I enjoy snacking on the small land birds, but I wouldn't mess with an albatross. They are much larger than I am. After one final storm, we finally anchored at Buenos Aires, Argentina in South America on Thursday, December 15th. It was an exciting trip. It's fun to remember those stories. Well, it was so interesting. You saw so many cool things. Thanks. I liked how the origami puppets brought it all to life. I actually know how to make an origami bird. Do you want me to show you? Yes, please. Well, all right. So the first thing you'll want to do, Mr. Ropes, is have a square piece of paper. You'll fold one side into a triangle like this. Now you'll want to fold the other side into another triangle. After doing this, you should have two crossing lines. Next, we're going to fold the left corner right across, Oops. right about to here. So you don't want to fold it all the way. After you have that, you should see there's a bit of space right here. Now fold this backwards just a little bit. It looks like this. It should look a bit like a hat. Now turn it around and you should see you have two triangles. With the smaller triangle, we're going to fold it again, but remember, not all the way. So it should look like this. And with the bigger triangle, we're going to do a fun pleated fold. So it should look a bit like an accordion. And it'll end up looking like this. Always wanted to learn how to play an accordion. It's never too late. So maybe one day, but right now we're just going to make the fold. Now, you should, your paper should look like this and fold it over and fold the entire paper in half. This is kind of complicated. <laughs> it gets easier when you do it all, multiple times, trust me. I've had to practice many times. Practice always makes perfect. Now, once it's folded, we'll have the wings. So we're going to fold one wing up. Don't fold it all the way, but just about right here. So you should have some paper. Fold your other wing, because birds often have two wings. It's okay if one only has one, but in order to fly, we gotta have two. Now, I've never seen a seagull that has wings shooting straight up like this. So let's bend them. Now 
Now, the only thing missing is our seagull doesn't have a face. Now, I just drew some eyes, but you can personalize yours any way you want. And then afterwards, you can name it. See, my mom never let me have a pet, so this kind of makes up for it. I'm going to name him Theodore. That's a great name. Thanks. Here's my bird. What do you think? Oh, I love it. Look at that color. It reminds me of this bird in your story, the one Ernest Perkins and Harry Perry threw into Dr. S's cabin. Yeah, that's such a funny story. Did I tell you Ernest Perkins also kept sketches of his trip? No, that sounds so interesting. He drew pictures of the crew, lighthouses, and things that happened. He even sketched a picture of me. Do you want to see? I would love to. Just a moment. There I am. That's me in 1892 on board the Mabel I. Myers. Wow, you haven't aged a bit. Thanks for sharing. Will you be back next Tuesday with another puppet show? I really love these. Yes, thank you for watching this week's puppet show. And to all of you in the audience, thank you for watching too. I hope to see you again next week. Wow.